Welcome, everybody. Hi, my name is uh, Steve Peacock, and uh, I am the uh, Global Cloud Services Head. Uh, today, we are going to uh, make our debut of the OpenStack uh, announcement for OPNFV certification and validation program that Ericsson has announced uh, October 30th. We're going to talk about the program a little bit, uh, some of the details and some of our plans. Obviously, not everything's all put together in regards to OPNFV. Uh, but uh, we believe this is a proactive investment that we have to make for the OPNFV, which we are a platinum member of, and uh, for our industry uh, customers who are expecting a, a higher level of telecom grade uh, performance, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. I'm joined on stage uh, with two colleagues, uh, Miguel Weger um, and uh, uh, Jeff Hollingville. Good. And they're going to go over the details of the uh, program after I uh, give you a little uh, introduction about uh, why this is important to Ericsson, why it's important to our vendors. Uh, I've prepared some slides, and I'll go over those real quickly, but I think the easiest way to understand the difference between the telco, telecom industry stack and the network demands and a normal IT uh, environment is to understand maybe three recent examples that I've seen in my personal life about the performance of the cloud. Uh, one of the regular commutes that I have in my global role is to go from Stockholm uh, to our suburban offices in Shista. And uh, the amazing thing about that commute on the subway is that, well, first of all, it's 20 to 30 meters underground on solid granite. And the second thing is that there's fantastic uh, telco communications underneath that, in that uh, granite too. Uh, last week when I was traveling there, I was standing at the end of the carriage with a fully uh, loaded car, and every single person on the car was looking at their phone. Not talking on it, but looking at it. Except for one guy, he was sleeping, right? And as I looked around there, I realized what kind of uh, revolution we've created in the telco space in the past few years, and that how dependent we are on these devices, that everyone in that car was looking at it. They were looking at spreadsheets, they were on their social media, and a large number of them were watching streaming videos, uh, watching Richard Quest on CNN talk about uh, the future of a uh, mobile environment. The other uh, recent experience that I had was just last night when I was helping my daughter with her math uh, homework. Uh, she had recently gotten a test grade of 80, which in our uh, family is a bad thing. And uh, over uh, the FaceTime, I was talking with her, while at the same time I was using uh, uh, Khan Academy to remember the things that I'd forgotten in high school and try to explain to her how to run through her homework. And it was interesting because the Wi-Fi in the hotel was not strong enough, so I switched my phone from Wi-Fi to the telco. And I actually improved the FaceTime video interface between me and my daughter because I didn't want to miss a single uh, syllabus, a single syllable of her explanation of why she got an 80 uh, on her recent test grade. And the le most recent experience was this weekend when the, my water heater in my house went out and I had narrowed it down to two different water heaters to replace the old one. One that was Wi-Fi connected and one was that not connected. Well, I didn't option for the Wi-Fi one because I didn't think that I wanted my heater to talk to my toaster and talk to my refrigerator and maybe make an energy coup inside my house. But I think this is three examples of how uh, dependent we are on the cloud performing. It's here today. And if you look at the telco environment, they have built a very complicated network to make that five nines of performance, that high transaction levels, not to miss a single syllable of your daughter's explanation across a video work today. The problem is when we introduce OpenStack and we introduce this open network environment, we're going to unravel all that work that we've done in the last decade. When we put it back together, we have to make sure that we have that same level of performance. That's why Ericsson believes that announcing the OPNFE certification program is critical to our customers. They'll be asking Ericsson to guarantee that level of performance. So let's take a look at what we've built. In the past decade or so, we built a very complicated network. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the uh, telco environment, it's a highly vertical environment. Lots of different programs interweaved with each other. 
And of course, it's all running at five nines. It's all running with uh, high levels of transaction. And interestingly enough, the applications control the infrastructure uh, in a way to make sure that the reliability and the consistency is all there. The goal that all the telco operators are working towards right now is to simplify their network so they can expand their network, uncomplicate it so they can add components and pieces to that environment. At the same time, they're trying to reduce their costs. And then the third thing that they're trying to do, which is very interesting, is to open up new marketplaces, primarily provide services like we see from uh, Terramart and Amazon and Microsoft to enterprises, data services, building commercial clouds and adding that on top of their telecom uh, infrastructures. So they have to build a more modular environment than what they're looking at today, which is a very complicated uh, environment. So as I mentioned, telco operators are really dealing with three infrastructures that they want to simplify and manage across the board. The first is their telco infrastructure that they've built, a very complicated, highly integrated. The second is the tr classic IT environment that we see uh, most of the people here at the conference. And the third is a commercial cloud capability. Three very, very different infrastructures today that they're trying to put into a, a common infrastructure, a common go uh, governance model, and a common security model that they can manage to reduce their costs. So what Ericsson is going to be doing over the next few years as this uh, evolution, this revolution occurs, is across all three of those environments, we'll be using programs like OpenStack and OPNFV to build components and parts that are interchangeable to bring third-party programs and applications and integrate them with the pieces and parts that we have today, all the while keeping an eye on uh, integrating new OpenStack and Open, uh, OPNFV uh, applications into that environment. Now we were very pleased to be a platinum sponsor for the program and we're an active uh, program in helping set up all the reference standards. We have a number of areas that we're going to need to certify because today in this environment if you look at a, <coughs> at a standard environment for the telco industry, companies like Ericsson own most of the in infrastructure. In the future Many of these pieces won't be owned by Ericsson, but they'll be owned by third-party uh, software companies or vendors. And the question is, for, from our customers, how do you possibly guarantee performance when you might have a change to the middleware that occurs somewhere inside these third-party packages? So we'll be using our laboratories to test the pieces, the interoperability of all these pieces, to try to uh, give use cases on performance and uh, guarantee levels of uh, throughput. All the time, we'll be watching for the different uh, forays that will be out here, new forums and standards. Ericsson's very committed to bringing in uh, third party and open uh, environments. So we'll have to manage multiple types of standards as part of laboratories. What we have planned for the labs is to uh, build case studies uh, that we'll build. Uh, we'll provide infrastructure to do those case study tests. And then uh, for uh, vendors in the industry or our customers that come to our laboratory, we'll be able to set up scenarios and give them performance feedback on those environments. The other thing that we'll be watching very closely as far as the reference standard is the management, uh, the, uh, the mano for this environment. Because in the telco operations, it's a very complicated uh, web of architectures, uh, software, policies and programs that are integrated into these packages today. We have to extrapolate all those things, publish them into some kind of reference standard, and then reapply them to the third party packages that are being integrated to our stack. So that'll be some of the uh, objectives of the laboratory that's out there. So as I, we uh, announced this on, on uh, October 30th, we're going to be building uh, two industry laboratories. The first is uh, targeted for uh, Europe and the second is going to be targeted for in the States. Uh, we're not sure exactly uh, what locations. We have uh, a number of candidates. Um, by uh, early 2015 we'll have established those laboratories and all the equipment for that. We'll be certifying vendors towards the uh, ITSI NFE standard and uh, we'll be validating multiple vendors that we'll be working with our stack or multiple vendors that our clients ask us to uh, certify inside the laboratory. We'll be producing benchmark performance based upon those case studies that I mentioned. 
uh, and we'll make sure that we comply with the portability of the VNFs. The VNFs are the applications that stand on top of that network. Okay? I'll bring up uh, Michael Wiegers to talk a little bit more about the details. Okay, my name is Michael Vigas. Um, um, forgive me if I don't, let's say, use all the buzzwords that are coming in cloud. Um, my background in the, in the company is very much in the telco industry. And uh, in Premier, I was working with multi-vendor interoperability issues uh, of our operators. So if you look at the operator, I think this, his main concerns when dealing, let's say, with upgrades is really that there's a high risk that there are outages there are loss of uh, quality of services, there are delays in the deployment and all this kind of stuff. And of course now if we introduce cloud solution, there is even more immaturity at operators and service providers to bring this into the networks. So there's a high degrade and there's a high risk that operators will lose money, will have additional costs. They probably, let's say, also lose customers in case there are big outages. And of course, let's say, they will also lose some kind of their market position. Therefore, I think it's very important that we make sure from the beginning that all the things we want to introduce into the networks are proven. And this is based, let's say, both from a vertical uh, interoperability, meaning within the cloud solution, but as well bringing the cloud solution into a legacy network. So the horizontal interoperability is also, let's say, a key issue that operators need to be addressed. What we offer here in, uh, let's say, from Ericsson point of view is that we try, let's say, to, to bring those new components into a an, an, into an certified platform that is based on an Etsy and OPNRV uh, platform. And by doing a, a typical verification certification project, we, let's say, test or verify this new cloud component in this uh, reference platform. So we deal with all, let's say, typical project uh, issues we also deal with legal frames, of course. We uh, have a uh, debugging uh, phase, of course, in, 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 in the project. And at the end, those, let's say, vendors that come with the cloud uh, to, our, to, our net, to our lab, they get a certification report. And using this certification report gives them evidence, gives also a proof that the component is working in an OPNRV Etsy conform platform. So how does this look in practice? I have uh, two examples here. One, let's say, is onboarding an, an VNF, so an application, on an existing cloud system or cloud platform. And the other one is uh, within the cloud system, let's say, putting an, 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 an software component on hardware, for example. And we are running, let's say, this verification project by running through test cases that are all based on Etsy and OPNRV standards. So we look at the standards and show the proof points in order to see that these components that we are onboarding or that we are testing within the vertical solution are, are being, let's say, compliant to, to the standardizations. This is a proven process that we are using in, in the telco industry for more than two decades now. Um, it sounds a little bit uh, that this will take time and this will, let's say, even, uh, uh, let's say, increase lead time to the products, but at the end, it's the opposite. By doing this in an early space, uh, in an early time of, of the product development, we save time, and especially the operators save time, because when they get the product, they are already proven to work in their environment. What you see on this slide is one example from cellular networks, which is basically my home turf, and so I'm a little bit more confident to talk about that one. Um, what you see is, is in cloud environment. So that one, let's say that we are producing with the open stack, with the open source, but we have, to we have to integrate this cloud environment into a legacy network. So there's a network, and we cannot, let's say, uh, uh, um, uh, hide this effect. The network is there, and of course the operators, they want to have some return of investment. They have invested a lot in these networks, so we have to make sure that our cloud components are working with the legacy network. And that's why uh, how we call it then horizontal verification horizontal verification to the legacy network. Um, doing, doing this, you see a lot of interfaces here based on CGPP, which is the main standard for, uh, for telco industry. And we are using, let's say, processes that are, let's say, also mature, let's say, for the, as I said, for the last two decades. What else do I miss? 
It's a full stack verification, meaning let's say we really let's say do an end to end testing using a device and up let's say up to the latest node that the device is uh, uh, let's say using in the chain is, is uh, uh, provided in, in this certification lab. There are no simulators. Of course we use but put some load on top of it to also uh, indicate uh, um, have some performance measurements. But at the end I think it's very important to understand that this is really let's say an end to end scenario and these are operators are looking for. They want to have a proof that this is not only working on simulators, that this is working on some kind of uh, uh, let's say uh, servers that are uh, not really building their network architecture. So they really want to have a proof that this is working in the networks. Okay. Then I Perfect. Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, so my name's Jeff Hollingworth. Uh, uh, if if you were in the keynote with the the BMW guy, you will have seen him introduce himself, uh, and I'm going to do it very similarly. Uh, I used to be a software guy. I used to be tremendously useful, but for some reason they put me in marketing. So now I'm the guy that makes the PowerPoint that goes to the BMW guy. Uh, I'm English. I, I just want to pick up on a, the, uh, the commentary that Steve made, funnily enough, where his daughter got an 80 in, in the score. Well, in England, if you get an 80 in the score, you've topped it. I've never met anybody that's got an 80 in the score. And, and I have lived for 15 years in Dallas now. My daughter goes to American school, and she came back one day, and she said she'd got 110%. And I said, that wasn't possible. And she said, no, that's completely possible. I got the bonus question correct. So many differences in many different scenarios and industries. So telco is no different from any other industry on the planet. It's going through transformation. And it's trying to pick up the qualities of speed and economy, but not lose its true values of reliability and trust and performance. A uh, couple of differences with, with telco, which is why it's valuable to understand it. Currently, it's a $2.1 trillion market, and we believe that's going to increase. And as Steve said, when it increases, it's going to actually introduce a lot of new opportunities for a lot of new players. We need to make sure that the same is happening in the future as it is today. And what do I mean by that? Hands up here, who has a mobile phone? OK, let, let's inverse that. Hands up here, who doesn't have a mobile phone? So there is only one question that you can ask at this show that's going to be universally true. The question is, is there anybody walking around here who is not connected? And the answer will be no. Now, you have an expectation that that device works wherever you are and whatever you are doing. And if it doesn't, then it's tremendously frustrating to you. That's why this industry has actually grown to the $2 trillion size that it actually has. Now, as Mikhail mentioned, one of the things that we have done to make sure that has happened is made sure that those handsets, before they get distributed to 10 million, 100 million people, work on the infrastructure that they need to work on anywhere on the planet. And that's kind of important, because to make sure that works before they get into the hands of 10 million or 100 million people actually is a very cost-efficient process to do. Because if you make a mistake on that, it's pretty hard to get them back. And you don't want to be the person that's being called. Now, in that process, we also, as I say, need to pick up on the speed and efficiency that cloud offers. Because if we don't, then it doesn't matter. But that's a balance. And what we want to do is bring our experience and our ways of working actually to the cloud community to make sure that happens in process. I think the other commentary that you're going to start to hear uh, at this show, and it will carry on, uh, and I think it will grow in force, that it's not really about rapid introduction of features if you can't actually manage and operate it in practice. And I think we saw that commentary from a lot of the keynote speakers that says, 
the, that that's growing in importance, how to do the simple operations, how do you do live migration, how do you do upgrades where there's not people who don't get the service while that's going on. What we're doing in this industry is a bit like changing the tires on a car that's going 160 miles an hour and it's not slowing down and it's not stopping. In fact, it wants to go at 200 miles an hour. So this process is making sure that we can actually do that collectively and actually understand what those issues are and take them out not as a barrier to speed, but also as an accelerant so that when we do push code straight to production, we have all the guarantees that that's actually going to be an improvement and not a setback. So what we are going to leverage and what we're going to expose to the, the external community is basically this base capability that we have of certification inside this new environment and we're going to transpose our process and ways of working so that we all collaboratively understand that and bring that to market a little bit better. That is not a technology problem. That is a technology process and people problem. That's not a walk off the cliff problem. Again, as the gentleman in BMW was saying, and the Time Warner uh, guy, it's a learning process and it iterates as quickly as possible. We will publicly make two of our facilities out of many facilities actually available towards the end of this year, uh, towards 2015, uh, one in Europe, one in the US, and we'll start opening up those ways of working and facilities, not with the point of view of, of kind of like driving an answer, but to have a collaboration that actually works inside these communities so we can actually make that work together. So I want to close with one comment and then we'll, we'll open up for uh, any questions if there are any. But it's a very simple statement actually and, it, and it's almost naive but it's, it's so naive it's, it's important not to forget it. Nobody, nobody who has been successful in running cloud operation has ever not managed the end-to-end -end performance and operation of that infrastructure. It always gets handled somewhere and we need to make sure collectively that it gets handled appropriately inside the telecom industry but we also believe that a telecom is just a large enterprise that's very demanding in terms of real-time performance and those same issues are required across any large enterprise that intends to depend their life on a strategic IT asset that's at the core of their business. And actually, we, we in our, I'm going to put my marketing hat on, that's what we call the network society at the end of the day, which we're moving towards. So on that note, uh, I can open in case there are any questions in the audience. Okay, thank you very much, have a great show.